All right, we're gonna do one more video here where we're gonna look at detail and how you could calculate the pH of a solution anywhere along a titration curve. Um, the example I'm gonna use is what it would look like for a weak acid being titrated by a strong base. So we had a previous video where we talked about the different options, but I'm really focused on this one. I'm gonna have this little lip, buffer zone, equivalence point, this is excess base. So we're gonna talk about all those different scenarios. I went ahead and pre-wrote some stuff just so that you don't have to watch me write it all out. Uh, what I want here though is I want one really big version of this curve so that we can really look at it in detail. So this is gonna be the pH. This is gonna be the volume added. Typically, this would be in something like milliliters of titrant uh, that you would have. This is always a known concentration. I shouldn't say always, but uh, whenever you're doing a titration, and so up here, you're going to have the uh, burette, and you're going to have the titrant up here. And this could be something, I'm making this number up. This could be like 0.1 molar NaOH up here. And then you've got your Erlenmeyer uh, down here where it's got your sample. And this is going to have some weak acid in it of unknown quantity. And so when you first start, you know this value, you know your concentration. You generally do not know how much is here. But if you have a full titration curve in front of you, it's amazing what you can really walk away with. So I'm going to say that this is like the starting pH that we're going to have here. I'm going to show my little kick up. This is going to go up like that. Okay, so there I've drawn my full titration curve. This point here where you see the steepest uh, increase in pH, that is going to be representative of the equivalence point. So I'm just going to write the EQ point here. Okay, and then this tracks down to a very interesting volume added. Um, you know, who knows, maybe this is 30 milliliters of this titrant that you've added by this point here. Um, I'm going to remind you that because this is a weak acid, by the time you get over here, you're sitting on a weak base, which means the pH is going to be above 7. So I'm going to kind of somewhat arbitrarily come down here and say, here's my pH 7. I just want to make sure that it's indeed definitely uh, that this equivalence point is above that, okay? All right, so I go through, I do an experiment, and I have now figured out how much uh, stuff I have added. So this is my titrant again. That means I can do a pretty quick calculation relating the number of moles of titrant added must be equal to the number of moles uh, of weak acid that I had to begin with here. So this could be... Uh, my weak acid over here. I would now actually know what concentration I have. And I'm sitting here on a measurable pH. This is going to be, we're going to label uh, one through five different zones of this. Uh, this is going to be labeled as zone number one here. Okay. And this is all HA. And I'm, maybe I'm going to put some little quotes around the all HA uh, because that is a little bit of an approximation. So let me pull this in over here. So what are we doing on zone one? Well, I don't have any base that I've added yet from this. So I have my HA. There's a whole bunch of water around. I'm going to get this reversible reaction occurring which you know is characterized by the Ka of the particular acid. I'm going to show you in a second that we're actually going to know what the Ka of that acid is. Um, so when you have the full curve in front of you, you, you do have enough information to do all of this. Um, sometimes information has to be pulled from different areas, though. So you would be able to use an ice table. So this is just the kind of the original type of weak acid problem that we were doing. 
Remember, you could have previously looked at this location to know what concentration you're probably dealing with for HA. We're going to learn that there's a location right in the middle here that's going to give me insight to my Ka. So I could use a nice table, um, have my initial quantity of this, calculate out this, uh, find the, the value of x that shows up when you define that change value, which ends up being the concentration of that H plus that's right there. Uh, and I have this note that says, look, I can't ignore that a small amount of this HA actually falls apart into this. And that's the whole point of the ice table. You're going to use that e equilibrium Ka value in order to figure that out. Okay, so taking a, a look back over here at what we have. So I'm tracking up. Then let's jump over here. I'm going to explain why I'm doing this in a moment. Um, but right in the middle of this, so if this is the equivalence point, and here's the amount of stuff that you've added, there's a halfway point that's right here. Okay, this is the, the half equivalence point. If this were 30 milliliters added, I'm just saying that at 15, I would go track this up. Uh, this is a really interesting thing. Maybe I should have made this one number two, but we'll, we'll live here. Okay, so this is actually going to be your perfect buffer. If we had started with um, all HA sitting right here, and we're on our way, we're actually adding OH minuses. We are on our way to yanking the H's off of these things. And every time I yank one of those... Uh, H plus is off. I'm going to be left with an A minus. Over here, we're going to say we're effectively all A minus. But this is that midway. This is where you've you've worked this problem about halfway through, so that you have half of your original material is still around, and half of it is now sitting at the A minus. And this is through this equation. So I have H A plus my O H minus a single arrow. This is going on inside of this titration here. Um, these things are taking actively, taking those H pluses away. Uh, so now I'm left with the conjugate base of whatever I started with, plus these waters. I'm, I'm in the process of neutralizing the acid here. So what's interesting is that the Henderson-Hasselbach equation, which was the one that says pH is equal to pKa plus the log, of aha, okay, square brackets around those. I'm getting a little tight on my writing. Um, but this is when this is this ratio comes out to one, log of one is zero, so the equation collapses down to pH is equal to pKa. So at this half equivalence point, you can track over here and then you can find this, and this is going to be the pH value, so pH is equal to the pKa right here. So this actually gives me some insight into what type of acid am I working with over here. And so where do you see this flat-ish part? It, it depends on the acid itself uh, for uh, and what pKa it's going to look like. I have selected um, in my drawing here, I have selected an acid that has a pKa that is in that range of, let's call it three or four or something like that. And that's what gives me the shape of this particular curve. Okay, so two and three are highly related here. So what, what's going on in two is I'm going to talk about the buffer zone. Now remember, the buffer zone is anywhere that's plus or minus one pH unit from the pKa. So my buffer zone is in this area. So maybe it picks up right around here, and then I'm gonna go back here, it picks up right around there. And so this area here, this is the buffer zone. When you are, zone, when you are doing a buffer problem, I have been coaching you to use the Henderson-Hasselbach equation. And that is what I want you to do here. So. I want you to think about a previous video that I did on this um, where we had a weak acid and we were putting in a certain amount of strong base. 
and we're, we started with a certain amount and we converted some of it over. And this ice table, remember, was for a limiting reactant problem, single arrow, where I have um, a limiting reactant in my OH minus. I don't have enough to fully neutralize this, but all of that OH minus gets used. I'm left with this much of the original acid and there's how much of the the conjugate base that I had. It is a really important thing that you make the connection that that is the process that is happening anywhere in this part of the curve. I do not yet have enough volume added of my, my strong base in order to completely neutralize to get up to that equivalence point. So you're going to treat these problems as if they're just buffer problems. So what I say is, hey, you're in the buffer zone whenever you're at pH plus or minus one. So you're going to use the Henderson-Hasselbach equation. You're going to assume those little x values are tiny and you're not going to bother with them. So what do I mean by that? Well, let me go back to yet another part of a previous video. So remember I said that I had my weak acid and in this part of that video, what I did is I, I said I had this ratio already established. And we went through this, I don't know if I want to call this a proof, but we said that we can't absolutely talk about the, uh, the small deviation from this initial value that's going to happen um, on both of these terms. But when we get down to the actual mathematics, it turns out that it's a brilliant approximation to just say, the initial amount that you're dealing with is actually the, the correct number to be working with your, within your buffer here so that you can just figure out that ratio for the Henderson-Hasselbach equation and that log of the aha part, okay? So you are not going to go through an extreme amount of work um, for this part. So what do I mean by that? What if I had 100 parts of HA and I have now put in uh, 25 parts of the strong base. I'm going to say I had 100 parts of these, 25 of them went away, so now I have 75 of these, and I've created 25 of the A minuses. Okay? And so if that didn't make sense, back it up and do that again. I said I had 100 of these, and I've put in 25 parts of my strong base. So the 100 of this that I started with would go down to 75. But in that process, I have created, so I'd have only 75 there now, but in this process, I would have created 25 of these. So I'd have a 25 over 75 inside of here. Uh, I could know my pKa by looking at this location, and I could tell you exactly what the pH is going to be. All right, so one, use a nice table here. Buffer zone is anything that's zone two is specifically anything inside of the buffer zone. We have a very special point, which I'm calling three, which is when you have that ideal buffer. And again, what you're looking at for that perfect ideal buffer is the half equivalence point. So go find the equivalence point, take half of it, and you know exactly where you should be dealing. Now let's talk about this one. This is the one where you actually have a weak base because if I was all HA over here by the time I've done my neutralization, I am quote unquote all A minus by this point. So let's take a look at that. That is a bit of an approximation. I'm, I'm saying, well, look, now I'm all A minus. I've completely neutralized. But the reason why that's an approximation is because you're no longer in the buffer zone. If you are no longer in the buffer zone, I need to actually take into account uh, how this weak base is behaving in solution. So this is where I would say, look, I now have a certain amount of weak base. It reacts with the fresh water. It does and makes the conjugate acid here plus the OH minus. Remember that OH minus is the reason why we're a little bit above pH 7 here. So this is where you got to write out this equation, use an ice table, use the KB value, find that X value, which is going to be the concentration of OH minus, 
and go through that process where you convert that to a POH, convert your POH to a pH, and you could solve that out. And you should find that you're going to get numbers that are something like a 9 or a 10 or so on pH. So that is zone 4. Okay. Now, lastly, we have zone 5 is up here. Zone 5 is when you have really gone beyond here and you have completely neutralized your acid. And now you just have a bunch of extra OH- minus around. So this is excess OH minus. So come back when I had used the previous example where I had 100 parts of this. I'm saying over in this region, this is maybe when you have added, let's call it 150 parts of OH minus by this point. So from my titrant. So what I would be saying is of the 100 that I added here and the 150 I added here, a hundred of each of those are going to go, they're going to duke it out, and they're going to neutralize each other. And I'm going to have an extra 50 remaining of this OH minus. So here's what it looks like. Here's the original acid. I was saying that this was a hundred. In my example I was just using, I was saying I had 150 parts of this. They're going to react as much as they can by using all of the limiting reactant up to neutralize and make these waters over here. But the problem is, is that I have 50 extra OH minuses left. So now what I need to do is I just need to say, well, if I had 50 OH minuses left in a certain amount of liquid, figure out the concentration of that and calculate the pH, probably a pOH first and then a pH. And I will tell you that you no longer need to worry about what the weak base is doing. You're going to have another one of these situations where if you were to go through more exten extensive math on this and generate a nice table and talk about how much stuff you would have um, converting over from your weak acid, and I know this is not currently the correct reaction for that, but you're going to have one of these situations where the small, tiny amount of, of A- minus actually reacting with the water and, um, you know, participating in the acid and base, this is absolutely going to get dwarfed by what this is doing. So these are very simple problems out in zone 5. They're just neutral, neutralization limiting reactant problems. Okay, the last thing I'm going to say is you just need to be careful as you're doing these problems because let's say that I started with 25 milliliters of sample. So I have 25 milliliters here. you got to keep in mind that you are adding solution the whole time. So if I had 25 milliliters of sample here, I believe earlier in this video I said um, that this might have been 30 milliliters added. That means I had 25 plus 30, I had 55 milliliters here added, and then I have some even larger volume added up here. And so you are having a changing volume anywhere along here. You just need to keep that into account because you are often calculating the concentration of things. Okay, so these are, these are um, they look like very complicated problems, um, but Truthfully, at every single one of these points, you have done this type of acid-base chemistry before. So it's more of just trying to piece it all together at this point. All right, hopefully that worked out for you. Uh, we'll just stop it there.